21st of September 2001, the torso of the boy police named Adam was found floating in the River Thames near Tower Bridge in London. The River Thames runs underneath Tower Bridge and on the 21st of September 2001, a passerby noticed what he thought was a mannequin. He took a closer look and realised that he could see bones sticking out of the shoulders and spine out from the neck. He called police and they arrived shortly afterward. The police picked up the torso and took it away with them. The only item of clothing the torso was wearing was a pair of girls orange shorts. Here is a diagram of how he was found. It shows his torso obviously with his head cut off and his arms are cut off and also his legs. It, there is available on the internet um, actual images. If you watch the Channel 4 documentary Torso in the Thames, they actually show actual footage of his body, but I don't find that appropriate to put on here because some people might find it disturbing. And here is an image of his, the actual shorts he was wearing. A post-mortem showed he was between the ages of four and seven years old and how he had died. He was poisoned and he'd had his throat slit and then he was drained of his blood. His head and limbs had been removed with expert precision. There was a significant bruising to the neck and the voice box had been cut out. The skin was removed off the limbs and the neck before amputation. Due to there being no blood found on the shorts, investigators believed that they had been placed onto the body 24 hours after death. Further testing on his stomach contents and trace minerals in f found inside his bones were able to show that he had only been in the UK for a few days before his murder. Looking at the results from these tests, it is believed he was most likely from the region of southwestern Nigeria near Benin City, which is known to be the birthplace of voodoo. Investigators on the case suspected that he had been trafficked to Britain for the sole purpose of being a muti killing, which is a ritual sacrifice that is performed by a witch doctor. They use the child's body parts to make medicine, medicinal potions called muti. Police were surprised after the discovery of the body that there was no one coming forward to report a child missing or any cases that a child was absent from school. This led to the police searching databases of missing children in Britain and Europe, where, which were searched by investigators, but as they were unable to find a match, they appealed to the public for help. In a press conference, Commander Andy Baker of the Met Police spoke about the boy. We have not identified the child and consequently we have taken the unprecedented step of giving him a name. It's Adam. Until his family is identified, we will... Oh, sorry. We will act as his family and his community will be the community of London. We are committed to doing everything possible to catch Adam's killer. The girls' orange shorts found on Adam were manufactured by a kids' company and were only available in Woolworth stores in Germany from May 2001, giving only a window of six months for the murderers to have purchased them and to be located in Germany in this time frame. During the early days of the investigation, Adam's case was compared to that of a murder that had happened in Epping Forest during the 1960s. A young black girl was found dismembered in a similar way to Adam. No one was charged for her murder at the time, but it was circulated with rumours that she had been murdered in an African ritual killing. A 13-day search of the River Thames was conducted and on the last day, which was the 13th of October, a bundle was found floating on the surface.
It was a plastic sheet that had been wrapped up and inside it contained seven half-burned candles. The sheet also had a name written on it three times. I might struggle saying this because it's an African name. So I'm sorry if I mispronounce any of it. Adio Aid Aid Kojio Fola Adio and believed it was either related to Adam and his murder or another ritual killing. The police were able to track down a man by this name who was able to explain that his sister had performed a ritual prayer in his name to protect him and for the prayer to work, she had to throw the bundle into the water. The police believed his story ruled out the sheet being linked to Adam's murder. The police feel their trail felt their trail was going cold until a new lead from South African police came in the form of a similar murder that happened in their jurisdiction. In 1994, South African police found the body and amputated limbs of a six-year-old boy who had been a victim of a Muti killing. A South African pathologist, Professor Hendrik Schultz, who worked on this case came to London to see if they could see any similarities between the two cases. He said that the head was amputated in the same area on both bodies. They were both found their bodies of running water. He noted that they both were wearing orange with a South African boy in an orange sheet and Adam in orange shorts. The investigation made little progress within a year, so London officials visited Johannesburg in South Africa to meet with Nelson Mandela. He made a public appeal asking for any information. The broadcast was shown throughout Africa and was even translated into tribal languages that included Yoruba, Yoruba? I'm not sure if that's correct, which was the local language for the region that Adam may have been from. London Met Police visited South Africa again in 2003 to talk with the detectives and Muti experts who worked in the South African Police Service's occult unit. The experts believed that the orange shorts Adam was found in meant he was murdered by a family member. The police then travelled to Nigeria where they launched the campaign to find Adam's parents. However, despite visiting all elementary schools, and investigating all missing children within the region, they found no clues. On the 29th of May 2011, a report was released claiming that the torso was that of a six-year-old boy called Ikpomosa after a TV crew tracked down a woman who once cared for him in Germany after his parents were deported back to Nigeria. Joyce Osaya Gerd, I'm sorry if I've I've done that wrong, told ITV London tonight that she gave the boy over to a man called Bawa, who took him to London. Investigators believed this was the major breakthrough the case needed. However, in February 2013, Osia Gerd contacted the BBC and revealed that Adam was Patrick Er, Er... Erhabo and Ikpomwosa, who was previously said was not Adam's real identity. She revealed Bawa was Kingsley Ojo and had misidentified an image of a boy she'd given to the press, insisting it was a photo of Adam when it was a photograph of a friend's living son. I've not included the picture because I decided not to. But it's easily available online if you want to see it. It's it's a little boy stood with, I think he's wearing a coat and he's looking straight at the camera. So just be aware that's not actually a photo of Adam because nobody knows the real identity of him yet. This led to the police doubting Osagird's mental state and thus any of her claims to identify Adam's real identity are not taken to be accurate. This led the police left the police with no formal identification of Adam. The Met Police believed the publicity of the case helped to any future ritual crimes to happen in the UK. 
Possible links to Adam and his murderers happened in July 2002 when a Nigerian woman arrived in the UK from Germany who claimed to be fleeing from a Yobra, Yobra cult that practiced ritual murders. She claimed they tried to kill her and her son and she knew... Oh, sorry, she... They tried to kill her son, and she knew Adam was murdered by his parents in London. The police searched her flat and found orange shorts with the same clothing label as those found on Adam. She was sent back to Nigeria in December the same year. The police conducted surveillance on the women's associates, and this led police to another Nigerian, Kingsley Ojo, the same man, Osagerd. Had, made, had said, took the boy she was looking after in Germany and who she believed was Adam. The police searched his home and found ritual items, but none of the DNA found matched was of Adam's. In July 2004, Ojo was charged with child trafficking offences and sentenced to four years. As of June 2018, the police had been unable to identify Adam and all his murderers. The police only know where he roughly came from and that he'd been in the UK for a matter of days slash weeks. He was black between the ages of four to seven and originated from the southeastern region of Nigeria. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact the following Met Police on 101 or Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. I'd like to say a big thank you to Channel 4 for doing a really good documentary on the case. Back in, I think it must have been the first two, three years after it first happened because there isn't anything from recent years in it and they did a really good job of following the detectives and talking really in depth about it because if I would not watched the documentary I would have had hardly any information to write on this apart from you know about how he died and that's it but I don't go into depths of like how ritualistic murder takes place and stuff and how prevalent it is and other similar cases so I'd like to say Rod really like to recommend the documentary because it's called Torso in the Thames, Adam's Story. It's not available on 4OD, but it's easily available on YouTube. And I'll put a link to the, the copy that I watched online in the description box. I also watched a similar um, YouTube video as well. It, was, it, talk, it talked about Adam's case to begin with in the video, but it does go on about just moody killings in general but I think a lot of people would find it really interesting um I'm not sure what the actual documentary is called because it's on the real stories um youtube channel I'm just opening it now on my computer to find out what it actually says because I know with real stories sometimes they actually write the wrong title on the um, video when in fact it's called something totally different the actual documentary so I'm just scrolling I should have looked at this earlier it's called Mooty Murder the dark side of occult belief systems in Africa but if you search for it on YouTube it's called they've called it actually Voodoo Killing the Boys in the Thames Crime Documentary Real Stories but that's misleading because literally it's only about the first 10 minutes is about the Thames uh, about Adam really but if you want to know more and learn more about Mooty murders then I find it I think you'll find it really interesting because I found it really interesting too so I'll share a link to that in the description box as well so I hope you've learnt something today and thank you for watching